What are the symptoms of? UIs. Okay. The clinical signs and symptoms. What is what for your clinical? Manifestation or presentation. Just you go quickly. As you know, the UIs is. I will go with the background. UIs is the inflammation of the urinary tract. Is the inflammation of the urinary tract. And you know what we mean? It means the iris, the CVD body, and the pore. Three things. So if there is inflammation of the iris, it will be called iris. If it will be inflammation of the CVD body, it will be cyclides. If it will be inflammation of the cori, it is called coriidites. If from the cori it goes to the retina, it is called coriidites. If it starts with the retina, it is called coriidites. It is called retinocoriidites. So if it starts from the cori and then goes to the retina, it is called coriidites. If it starts from the retina and goes to the cori, it is called retinocoriidites. Okay? So, it can mix up. Something can start from the cori and it can go to the retina. And something can start from the retina and it can go to the cori. So be clear about that. So we have the iris, cyclides, and the iridocyclides. Iris means iris. Cyclides means silly body. Iridocyclides means both. Iridocyclides means both. Iris and the silly body. So, then there is one more term, what's called intermediate UIs. That's called intermediate UIs. Intermediate UIs is the posterior part of the cilic body. Posterior, inflammation of the posterior part of the cilic body. That's called intermediate UIs or pars planites. Pars planites. Then posterior unit of UIs, you know, it is cori and it starts as a cori dies. So next we will come to so we have iris, we have iris iris, we have intermediate UIs, and we have the what's called the posterior UIs. Posterior UIs. Generally the vitreous, generally the vitreous is divided into two parts. It's divided into two, two parts. And the vitreous is mainly intermediate UIs or pars planites and posterior vitreous is in the posterior okay so anterior part of the vitreous is the intermediate UIs and posterior part of the vitreous is posterior UIs so posterior vitreous cells is feature of posterior UIs and cells in the anterior vitreous is feature of intermediate UIs so you should be clear sometimes in the side also you can have Cell in the anterior vitreous. So we have two types of classifications. You know that it can be acute. Acute means what? Acute means redness. Okay, pain, congestion. Okay? So that means acute. Chronic means going on. Low inflammation, low redness, nothing, slight irritation, that, that's the chronic. Then there is one more granulomats and non granulomats. Granulomats and non granulomats. That is, granulomats, you know, tuberculosis, syphilis, other uh, like sympathetic UIs, or uh, even VKH, they can present as granuloma. They can present as granuloma or granulomats UIs. Next. So we can have So we can have. I will give you a background of the disease first. Okay. So you can have one with one before. Ah, this is one of some etiology. Like herpes can present at UIs. Herpes keratitis that can uh, cause UIs also. COV retinitis. What is COV? Cytoretinitis. It happens in AIDS patients. Have the AIDS patients. Then toxoplasmosis is one more type of parasitic type of infection. Then 
Plasmaplasmus, you know. What is the organism in Toxoplasmus? Hmm? Yes, Toxoplasma gondii. That spreads from cats and other things. Eh? That can present as posterioites. Then we have the parasitic infection. Toxoplasma, even almost the case, they can produce some posterior pole granulomas or posterioites like things. Then rubella. Rubella is one more viral infection. Okay? So that can also present as posterioites. Then we have one more disease, what's called VK. Vogot Kayatabi Harada syndrome. What is in this? Vitiligo. Vitiligo. There is vitiligo in the body. Skin may vitiligo. Then it has one more neurological manifestations. It has neurological manifestations. You can have uh, cells in the cerebral spinal fluid or it can cause ear symptoms like tinnitus or hearing loss. So it can present. And in the eye it presents as what? Uites. What type of uites? It presents as choroiditis. It presents as choroiditis. Choroidal effusion. And it causes a retinal detachment. It causes a that is called exudative retinal detachment. What's called? That means what? The fluid from the choroid is lost. Fluid from the choroid is lost. That comes out from the choroidal blood vessels. And retina is detached due to fluid. Due to fluid. Once it is dissolved, the retina gets reattached. Retina gets reattached. This is called exudative retinal detachment. What's called? Is there any other cause of exudative retinal detachment? Anybody can tell me? Yes, there is one more cause that is the uh, high hypertension. High hypertension. When it happens? Eclampsia or preeclampsia? You have heard in pregnancy there is a hypertension. That's called eclampsia. That's called eclampsia or preeclampsia. Is that also exudative detachment? Even the blood pressure goes really high. You understand? So these are the two most important causes of exudative detachment. One is BKH, other is the hypertension. Then we have a disease, what is the basic disease? It's a chronic inflammatory disease. It presents as UIT. It, it's most common in Japan and it goes along the silk road. You can read what is silk road and other things. But there's uh, uh, anterior UIs and hypopion in the anterior UIs, most important. And it can have genitourinary symptoms, it can have oral ulcers, or it can have second dermographism. If you put some scratches on the second, they remain for a long time. So it's a very tricky disease. Next, it can also, also cause UIs. Then Fuchs is a one more disease. Fuchs is one more. It happens in young patients. It happens in young patients, hardly 20, 30 years. And they present as diminution of vision. And diminution of vision is due to the cataract. There is due to cataract. And uh, they have some KPs. They have some KPs, genetic traits on the cornea, on the endothelium of the cornea. And once uh, we operate them for cataract, they have some neovascularization of the iris also. They have neovascularization of the iris. And in the long, long cases, they can go into glaucoma. They can go into glaucoma. So cataract is an early manifestation of fuchs, and uh, glaucoma is a long-term indication of fuchs. And one more important in this iris, I think. In this, I was silent, there are no posterior signs. That's very important. This is the only humites, there are no posterior signs. Normally, I was silent, is represented by posterior signs, but this is the only condition in which there are no posterior signs. Next. Tuberculosis, you know, it's a rapid disease. Huh? 
it can lead to granulomatous inflammation in the eye also. It can cause any conjunctural granuloma or iris granuloma or choroidal granuloma. It can spread all in all parts of the you. Next. Sarcoidosis again is the granulomatous cystitis. You know the disease. So it can also cause anterior posterior granulomatous type of cystitis. Next. Next. So in sarcoidosis, you know there are lung problems. There are uh, problems in the uh, pulmonary architecture. Next. So this you remember. You need somebody more specific. We can take history taking in UIs. How we should take history taking? Present illness, the onset, how long it was there, the course, how it's progressing, then the symptoms, what are the symptoms, whether it is in the right eye or the left eye, laterality, then the treatment has been treated given or not, then the post curable history. When the previous episodes were there, their past therapy was there, what was the response, then the previous uh, trauma or surgery. Trauma or surgery. Because trauma and surgery will also cause UIs. Okay? Any type of trauma or any type of surgery can cause UIs. Then we have the medical history, you know, as you know, I have told you many diseases. So UIs is secondary to some diseases. So you have to ask the history of it, like the systemic illnesses, sarcoidosis, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile huh? rheumatoid arthritis, tuberculosis, syphilis, then other medication, they can also cause UIs. Next, next. Then the social history, the dietary history, the sexual history, the intravenous drug abuse. As you know, AIDS is a very dangerous disease. It's a uh, uh, what's called uh, immunodeficiency syndrome, and in this one, this immunodeficiency, it can cause other types of disease. What's called opportunistic infection in the eye, also, like cytomegalovirus. You understand? So even the even some parasitic infections. You understand? Even moroscum. So there are so many diseases which can cause. And uh, some of them can have a sexual effect. Okay, so you have to ask the history of infect directly or indirectly. You have to ask the history of AIDS. Okay, then we can have the demographic idea: the age, sex, race, some diseases, some UIs are common. Suppose some child has juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. And he has UIs. You will correlate. He has an arthritis, he has a mm, UIs. Okay? So age you have to say whether it's the age is a child, it's adult, or it is an elderly patient. Then the birthplace, then the foreign travel, suppose uh, you have a geographical risk. I told you basics is more common in Japan. Okay? Yeah, all around the city road. So you can see the geographical area has an impact. Then some, basically this uh, UIs is a sort of an autoimmune disease. It's an autoimmune disease. So family history is also important. Family history is also important. And uh, medical illness or tuberculosis or maternal infection or previous history of UIs. Even foreign travel, somebody has gone from here to Japan or somewhere else. He can get diseases which are prevalent there. Okay? So, so all this history has to be uh, asked for. But you have to correlate. You have to correlate. Suppose somebody who has mild and easy UIs, you are treating it with steroids, with midnatics. You have to see what can be the exact uh, this, um, correlation. The way I told you, juvenile, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis in child has. UIs. You will correlate this because of that. Somebody has tuberculosis, he has UIs. You have to correlate with that. Otherwise, you have to do thousands of investigations and they will be negative. They will be negative. So, your clinical correlation should be very good in that order. So, history is very important. The way I told you to ask all these histories, that is very important. And number second is most of the time the UIs is idiopathic. 
the cause is not known. Maybe 80, 90 percent. Even 10, 20 percent, you can have causes. So it is not necessary every time you will get a cause. And another third problem in the U.S. is it is happening. It is happening. Suppose you have treated this year. In 2021, you have treated the U.S. Patient is all well now. After six months, he come in, come, comes again with redness. Okay? So you know it has recurred. So suppose somebody gets a herpes zoster infection of the eye or herpes simplex of the eye. And after six months, he develops UIs. He develops UIs. Or after two, he develops one UIs. Then after six, for six months or one year, he's all right. Now again, there's recurrence. How you come? How you come to know he has a recurrence? Even if there are both my side, but redness appears. If redness in the eye, that denotes that it has recurrence. Redness in the eye means that recurrence if there is a previous history of your eyes. Next. So you have to all system view because the etiology is varied. So. General fever, weight loss, man, manage, night sweats, huh? then rheumatological is important. Arthritis causes more UIs, I feel. So, even uh, uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, you have know, adults also rheumatoid arthritis, that causes UIs more often. So, even low back pain, joint stiffness, why low back pain? Hmm? Tuberculosis. Anything else? Ankylosing spondylitis. Okay? Ankylosing spondylitis. Then joint stiffness, again rheumatoid arthritis. Then neurological rash, sores, alopecia, vitiligo, I told you, basically sorry, VKH, that can rather like that. Then neuro neurological, again, genitis, headache, meningitis, like that, weakness, paralysis. Again, VKH like syndrome, then respiratory, I don't break shortness of breath or cough or this, again, small fibrosis, you have to rule out. Then GI, behavior, the bloody stools, acid ulcers, again, basics, you can have symptoms like that. Then genital urinary, again, you have this uh, basics, which can present as genital urinary syndrome. Next. So now we can come to the proper topic. Clinical symptom. Clinical symptom. Once the patient of your eyes comes to our OPD, what he complains? Pain. Number one, he complains of pain. Severe pain. pain. Severe pain. pain. Then the next symptom is the redness. Next symptom is the redness. Then we have the photophobia. Then you have the lacrimation. And then we have the dimness of vision. So we will elaborate all this pain, redness, photophobia. Lacrimation or dimness of vision. Pain is intense in them. Pain is intense, intolerable pain. It is intense and intolerable pain. Next. So the redness is very important. Redness is very important. So you have to differentiate what sort of redness it is. High redness is due to different causes. Suppose subconscious have subconscious have it is also redness. You understand? Conjecture, allergic conjecture, it is also redness. Infective conjecture, it is also redness. You understand? So, we have to see what sort of redness it is in the UIs. What sort it is? It is circumcornea. Or what is called serially flush. It is called serially flush. Circumcornea or serially flush. So, this redness is along the limbus. If this redness is in the limbus. It is not in the cornea. It is not in the cornea. It is not a discharge or discharge or it causes itching. It is not like that. Redness. It is something different. What are the causes of certain corneal congestion? One is UIs. Other causes? G? Glaucoma. Photon glaucoma? Please get a photon glaucoma. Yes, it happens in glaucoma. Don't be afraid. Get up. You don't. She told us. Very good. Very good. Why is it happening to me? Do you know? Anybody knows why it happens to glaucoma? And what type of glaucoma it happens? Hmm? Normally, 
There are some attraction currents. So it goes like this. Down top. You understand? Once it comes from the cerebral body, it comes from the pupillary border, then it goes down, then it goes up. So because of the convection currents, because of the convection currents, the lower half of the organ is more commonly involved with the KPs. Let's say told, they can be fresh KPs, which are like dots. They are dots, they are white, they are dots and white and well handwritten. And you can have even medium KPs or you can have much bigger KPs, what are called mutton fat KPs. They are found in granulomatic device. Okay? The chronic, you know the old KPs, they are brown and they are shrinkated or shrunk. Next. Then we have the something in the aqueous. We have something in the aqueous. So aqueous plane and aqueous cell. Aqueous plane and aqueous cell. So we have problem with the aqueous. So flare is due to what? Flare is due to protein, due to albumin, I think. No? Okay? Cells are same leukocytes. Okay? Cells are same leukocytes. And spray is due to protein. The aqueous cells and flay, they are classification. Suppose I classify the aqueous flay. Okay? So, just uh, if we do a, well, just detectable, we can take it as grade 1. Okay? If the, suppose uh, there is, it's moderate, and you can see the eyes clearly. We can say that it's moderate. Or if the iris tails are slightly hazy, then it's a mark. Okay? Or oh, if this is very severe, you cannot so see now any iris tails and there is a fibrinous agitation in the AC. That's good score. So mild you know or grade one, just effectively. And rest of the classification is on the whether you can see the iris tails or not. If you see mm, mm, clearly iris tails, it's moderate. If you cannot see iris tails hazily, it is plus 3. If you can't see anything and there is a fibrinous agitation in the AC, it is plus 4. Okay? Then we have aqueous cell. So it is, depends upon the number. If you have less than 5, it's grade 1. If you have 5 to 10, it's grade 2. If it is 11 to 20, it's grade 3. If it is 21 to 50, up 50, it's grade 4, grade 3. If it is more than 50, it's grade 4. Then you can add one more grade, grade 5 also. If they are so numerous, they form a hypopion. They form a hypopion. They form a hypopion. They settle in the AC. They settle in the infinite coordinates of the AC. And they form a line, a white line. That is the hypopion. What is classical about hypopion? It is sterile. It is sterile. Pass anywhere in the body is infected. Pass anywhere in the body is infected. But in the eye, pass is sterile. Okay? This is the difference between the eye and the rest of the body. Anywhere in the body, if there is pus accumulation, that is infected. But in the eye, it is sterile. So you can have some hyphema and herpetic or traumatic, that's not that important. Next. So one more thing is these uh, granulomatic disease. These granulomatic, now we come to the eyes. Now we come to the eyes. These granulomatic diseases, they can form some nodules. They can form some nodules. If these nodules are at the pupillary border, they are called copies nodules. Copies nodules. If they are within the stroma of the iris, it's called basalka nodule. So suppose in tuberculosis, in sarcoidosis, you can have such lesions. Next. So the iris as such, because there is congestion in the uh, iris. So it can change its color. 
there can be some water logging in the ice. There can be some water logging in the ice. And second to that, what will happen? There will be change in the color of the ice. It can appear muddy. Or one more thing it can happen, the pupillary reaction becomes sluggish. Pupillary reaction becomes sluggish because there is water logging in the ice. And because of the sometimes in the ischemia, because of the ischemia, you can have some neovascularization of the ice, especially as you in pubes, hydrocyclides. There is some uh, neovascularization, especially in the angle ice vessels. Next, signing key. Once there is inflammation, once there is inflammation, there is adhesion, there is fibrosis. There is adhesion or fibrosis. Signing is the adhesion. Signing is the adhesion between the eyes and the anterior lens capsule. Between the eyes and the anterior lens capsule. So there, are, there can be multiple adhesion. Once you dilate some, such pupil, what will happen? It will become irregular. It will become irregular. What's called? Sestrum pupil. What's called? Sestrum pupil. Or there can be uh, total adhesion of 360 degrees. What are called ring signs? They are called ring signs. And what can happen because of ring signs? Hmm? Iris? Iris bombing. How? Because of the pupillary growth. First, they are the pupillary growth. Iris bombing is secondary to pupillary don't jump to bomb. So first is the pupillary growth. Second is the ice bombing. How you will treat this? Do an iridectomy. Do a iridectomy. Okay? Then there will be no pupillary growth and no ice bombing. <coughs> so pupillary growth, it is meiotic, it's small. And it is non reacting. So, non reacting or sluggishly reacting, non reacting we can't say sluggishly reacting. So, the cause is water logging of the ice and some irritation of the third nerve band, third nerve in the ice, branch of the third nerve in the ice. Occlusion pupil, I told you, it is the ring shiny, what we call, or the occlusion of the pupil. Next. So there can be some pigmentary change on the anterior lens capsule because the iris gets adhered to the anterior lens capsule. Now some pigment of the iris is released and that is attached to the anterior lens capsule. And the, there can be some aggregates means same. Aggregates means same adhesion of the iris with the lens capsule. Complicated cataract we will see later. Now we go to the posterior segment. Posterior segment. This hydrocytosis in any device, you can have some posterior segment changes, like some inflammatory, some inflammatory cells, cells in the anterior region. Some patterns. Okay? And number you can have, you can have a macular edema. You can have macular edema because inflammation is happening in the eye and inflammatory mediators, prostaglandins are released and they go to the vitreous. They act on the macula and they can cause a macular edema, what's called CMO. CMO means cystoid macular edema. Next. Did you understand this one? Oh. So, these are the complications. These are the complications. So, mouth is a complicated cataract. What is it? Complicated. Because the inflammation is going in the eye. So, it will affect the function of the lens. Okay? That is for the cataract. What type of cataract is it? Posterior subcapsule. Posterior subcapsular. What we call PSC. What we call? 
Public Service Commission. Okay? That's for the positions some people can try. Even some political can try can have. Even some political can But most common is political department can have. Remember. Then there can be a secondary glaucoma. There can be a secondary glaucoma. So it can cause glaucoma also, which is secondary, which is not primary. There is nothing in the trabecular meshwork, but there is a secondary glaucoma. Anybody can tell me whether it will raise the IOP or decrease the IOP? You might. It will cause both. It will cause both. So your answer is like that. Okay, it can decrease the IOP. It can decrease the IOP. How it will decrease the IOP? Once there is inflammation in the CVD body, but once there is inflammation in the CVD body, it can decrease the IOP. No, no, not all. Functioning of the CVD body. And this is produced by the CVD body. No US system. Okay? So, functioning of the CVD body will decrease. Okay? And one more is in chronic UI, there is one more mechanism that's called a cyclic, cyclic membrane. That's called cyclic membrane. That detaches the CVD body. That detaches the CVD body. And that will also decrease the CVD, CVD body function. So, it can cause a decrease in the IOP, intraocular pressure. So, but most common it causes an increase. What are the causes of increase in the intraocular pressure? Why it happens? Huh? No sinusy, nothing, nothing. Sinusy, I will tell you why it happens. But what the primary cause? Primary cause is there are inflammatory cells in the AC. There are inflammatory cells in the AC. They will go in. They will go into the septic mesh. They will block the diabetic mesh. Outflow. Block the diabetic mesh. Other thing is most important than that is it causes the trabecular meshwork inflammation. Trabecular meshwork inflammation. What's that for? That's for trabeculitis. That's for trabeculitis. So occlusion of the trabecular meshwork by the inflammatory cells. Then number second is the trabeculitis. Number third is your ring sinusitis, which can cause a pupillary block. That can cause a pupillary block. That can cause also high IOP. That's the third mechanism. And number fourth mechanism, the mainstay of treatment of UI is what? Corticosteroids. Corticosteroids. So any UI, we give topical steroids or systemic steroids. And steroids by itself cause intraocular pressure. Okay? So there is one the entity called steroid induced glaucoma. There is a one entity called steroid induced glaucoma, which is open end of glaucoma. So that's a no cause of this. So I think that's enough for this. Posterior sign is not a complication. For it about this, it is a sign. It's a sign. Then occlusion pupillary, I told you that is. Oh, Mr. Can you, can you be quiet? So, cystoid macular edema, I told you the mechanism. Inflammatory mediators are released from the anterior, anterior uvea, eyes, then they go through the vitreous, or they are produced in the coli, or in the vitreous, and they affect the uh, blood vessels around the macular. Which is called excitation. Which is called and because what happens with this inflammation? There is release of vascular permeability change. Vascular permeability. One of the blood vessels around the macula leak. They will cause an edema. Okay. So cystoid macular edema is a very very important complication of UI. Okay. So anybody asks you, don't forget. Then. We have, they, they can cause also, there are more, these are anterior, 
These are the anterior uvoids complications. They are complications of anterior uvoids, not posterior uvoids fully. So you understand, it's only anterior uvoids. Then if the uvoids remains chronic, long standing, it can form a band. It can form a band. Patch, band in the cornea, which is horizontal. Which is horizontal. What's that for? That's called band keratopatch. What's called? What is the cause of the bad keratopathy? Why it happens? There is deposition of the calcium. There is deposition of the calcium at the bowman's level. At the? There is a deposition of the calcium at the bowman's level. And that causes the bad keratopathy. Then, if this is now long standing device and the serial body shuts down, serial body shuts down, I will become physical. Physical means what? It will have a really no IOP. It will shrink. That's called physical bulb. That's called physical bulb. Then, what are the complications we will tell in the posterior device? <coughs> Next. Is it complete? Come on, hang on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will go through this quickly. I will go with the five changes, that's all. We have to finish this. So, those who want to leave, they can leave. Those who want to be here, they be here. So, I have to finish this. Because otherwise, you cannot complete this. This is very important to understand. So posterior uvites, you have choroidites, what I know. So it can have many manifestations, like it can cause dyspharema, it can cause macular edema, then it can cause multiple choroidites, different choroidites, then it can cause RDs, serous RD, what I told you, ex vivo RD, then the fractional RD due to hydrosis, then rheumatogenous RD, that because of the holes, so it can cause a retinochoroidal atrophy or it can cause a choroidal retinal neovascularization. So it can cause atrophy, it can cause neovascularization, it can cause retirement, it can cause choroidites. So all, it can affect blood vessels, it can affect blood vessels, what are called vasculites. Okay? It can affect choroid, which is called choroids, choroidites. It can cause Retinal cause of pull, it can cause aggregate or it can cause uh, traction loss, or it can cause serous or or it can cause ragmatogens. Ragmatogens mean what? Holes. And through the hole something goes through that is detached the retina. So it can cause all three types of or serous, traction, or ragmatogens. What is the what is the symptom of posterior UIs?
those are called snowballs. So there are snowballs behind the lens. One more thing it causes, it causes peripheral retina. There are some exudates. What's called snow banking? What's called snow banking? Snow balls and snow banking. Snow balls are in the vitreous. What causes the floaters? And they are just behind the lens. And they are clumps of inflammatory cells. And in the peripheral retina, they are all exudates. They are, you can imagine, they are white type of things. They are the aura serrata. Aura serrata is the junction of retina and the cerebral body, pulse planner. So they are there. They are the exudates, and the, those exudates are called snow bank. They are called snow bank. Somebody, some, sometimes it's asked in MCQs also. Snow banking is a feature or hallmark of intermediate neurons. It's a hallmark of intermediate, neither anterior nor posterior. It's a hallmark of intermediate neurons. One more confusion I want to clear you. It can be of sometimes some KPs in the anterior. Some KPs in the anterior segment. One more, there are multiple terms for this. Some say intermediate neurons, some say past monites. Okay, some say uh, cyclites, okay, posterior cyclites or whatever. So what is uh, I will just clear your confusion between intermediate UIs and past monites. Intermediate UIs are generally applied when there is no cause. When there is no cause. Past monites is when it is secondary to something. Past monites is when it is secondary, like multiple sclerosis or anything else like that. Next. Hmm? Yes. Yeah, okay. uh, this is yes. Ah, these are you can see these are the aggregates. These are not not snow balls. They are snow banking. That is snow banking. Next. <laughs> these are only pictures. See, you have four pictures. Why you are worried? There are four pictures, there is nothing to say more now. Only pictures. You want to enjoy the picture? Yes, sir. Ah, just enjoy the picture. So you have to look for the lacrimal gland enlargement. Once you check the occult exam, you have to check for the lacrimal gland. Can you see the lacrimal gland is enlarged, which can cause device? So you look for the lacrimal gland enlargement. Then you can have some whitening of the hair, which can happen in what? BKH, like Okay? Then you can have some vesicles on the legs. The you can have. Herpes simplex. Herpes simplex, which can cause in the cause in the normal or the UIs. Next. Ah, this is the redness, what I told you. Ciliary flush. One thing I forgot to tell you, ciliary flush. How it is clinically, uh, clinically there is one more sign related to this. One is suspect the patient of uh, UI, we press the ciliary region. We start to press the ciliary region. This is ciliary tenderness. Okay, he evinces the pain. He will not allow you to depress it. That's called ciliary tenderness. That's called ciliary tenderness. Probably it is not written much in the books. Ciliary tenderness. Then you can have the conjectural nodule in case of tuberculosis or like that. Then you have to this. Next. So these are the mutton fat KPs. Okay? There are the mutton fat KPs which are seen in they are seen in glenomatous disease. The lower one is the
calcium value. What I showed you is to be first for the calcium. And the Bowman's test. And what happened? Don't go deep for the Bowman's test. Somebody asks you. Tell me this is the first one of the calcium and the Bowman's test. This is called bad calcium value. Next. Then these are the SPKs superiorly. What are SPKs? Bunkling care tags. Okay? Simple bunkling care tags. That will dot shape this. Middle one is a, it is a herpetic type of ulcer. It can become bigger, but it's called a geographical ulcer. Then, lower one, there is some, uh, there is some central involvement which leads to the stromal involvement, but it's called stigma keratoid wax. Next. Next. Uh, this is the fresh moon pupil superior. Okay? Middle one is the basaka and copy rodeos. There is one more last one. That is the sectoral iris atrophy. That is the sectoral iris sector where there occurs as iris atrophy. What are the causes of sectoral iris atrophy? Angle glory glory. Angle glory. Glaucoma is one cause of sexual iris atrophy. Other cause is herpes zoster. Herpes zoster, that can also cause sexual iris atrophy. Next. These are the anterior synecy. These are the anterior synecy. They are in the angle. They are in the angle. They are here. Normally, suppose this ventral iris. This ventral iris, it is bumped up. Suppose it is bumped up like this. It gets attached to the endothelium. It gets attached to the endothelium. And it shuts the angle of the anterior chamber. And no endothelium can occur to the outside. I will raise. It happens or not. It is chronic. Chronic UIs. Okay? Chronic UIs. Or even an endothelium glaucoma it can happen. So they, they are the peripheral active. There is a difference between the two. Posterior sinusity and anterior sinusity. Posterior sinusity are between the eyes and the lens. They are between the eyes and the lens. And anterior sinusity are between the iris and the cornea. They are between the iris and the cornea. So you have a different shape. Somehow you tell us what is the differentiation between the anterior sinusity and posterior sinusity. You should not confuse. Generally, students confuse. They say opposite. They say opposite. So, posterior sinusitis is between the iris and lens, and anterior sinusitis is between the iris and the endothelium. Okay? That too is the angle. That too is the angle. So, anterior you can remember is the angle. AA. Anterior is angle. Posterior is iris and lens. See? Or you can remember the IPL. IPL football or cricket match. So in the eyes, posterior sinusitis and then. Okay. Next. Then we have these two features of what? <coughs> glaucoma flattens the term. Glaucoma flattens the term. It happens when there are some cataract stage. There are some cataract stage. It follows following acute endoclonal attack. So acute endoclonal attack, two things happen. One is the glaucoma flatten, that's the cataract, and in the long term, they can cause peripheral anterior sinusitis. Then we have the complicated cataract. I told you, you guys can cause complicated cataract. What are the causes of complicated cataract? One is UX. In the eye, what are the causes of complicated cataract? Suppose anterior eye cataract, it can cause complicated cataract. Even the intermediate device, that also can cause complicated cataract because there is an inflammation just behind the lens. Retinoids treatment knows that the disease of the eye. Retinoids treatment knows that. So in that, uh, then the cataract is more common in the young age. So that's one of the causes of complicated cataract. Anything else? Hmm? High myopia. High? So these are the three causes of complicated cataracts. Uh, second.